you've had quite the career. You've been all over the place. You've worked some with uh, some incredible people, worked on some incredible projects, worked at some fantastic shops. I'd love to start at the beginning. Did you ever think in a million years that you would end up where you are doing what you're doing? Well, no, of course not. When I was little, I didn't even know this was a possibility. I remember a book that we had as, as a kid, like one of those little golden books. And I think it was Sleeping Beauty and the costumes were beautiful in the drawings. And so I think that's the first time I noticed costumes, but actually I wanted to be a horse veterinarian. So, no. <laughs> But, how, did you you know, go from a, how did you go from a horse veterinarian to uh, oh, getting an MFA in scenic and costume design? That's a good question. Um, so when you're in high school, like when you're a senior in high school or a junior maybe, <clears throat> the colleges, you have like college day. So I went to the University of Minnesota Veterinarian College representative and I told him I wanted to be a horse veterinarian and he just laughed at me. He said, well, this is the 60s. So there weren't that many women in that field, first of all. I'm small. And he said, we'd never let you do horses. You could do cats and dogs, but we'd never let you do horses. And I was like, my dream is gone. What am I going to do? And my mom said, well, how'd it go? What'd they say? And I told her. And she said, well, Polly, you can draw. Why don't you do something with that? So... I became an art major and I got involved in the theater and that was so much fun. Art is pretty solitary and I'm kind of an introvert. So being in the theater was kind of pushing myself to be a with, involved in a group activity. But yeah, I have a double major in art and theater in college. And then I went to an MFA program in theatrical design. I find it very interesting that you say that you are an introvert you come from Minnesota, and then one day you said, you know what, I'm over this. I'm going to move to the one of the busiest cities in the world, <laughs> most densely populated cities in the world, and see if I can make it there. I taught for like 10 years, and I was kind of, it was an undergraduate school, basically, and I was a little tired of the sorority party taking precedent over our costumes and our theater. So I thought, I'm just, I'm, now's the time. And so I packed up my daughter. And actually, one of my students from that college is Holly Hines. So she was out here. She was working at Barbara Matera. And so I contacted her, and I told her kind of what I was interested in doing. And she said, oh, you need to talk to Woody Shelf. And so that's what I did. And he actually, he had a small shop in the back end of Matera's. Woody had a little space blocked off within her shop. And so I went to him and he said, okay, I'll try you out for a day. So I literally worked like for nine bucks an hour for one day to test me out. And I guess he liked me because he hired me and gave me a raise. So I was there for like three years. We did some stuff for ABT, for Santo, Cinderella was the ballet. And we did Sylphide with Desmond Healy for ABT. Um, it wasn't until we worked on the Kaj that he said, okay, you can do pictures. We did some amazing hats for that show. It was such a terrific experience. So I have pictures actually of the Kaj hats in the shop. To Woody, um, we had a bunch of projects lined up and they all got canceled. So I got laid off. So I was like, oh, ah. and so I went to Barbara and she said to me, well, if you can work for Woody, you can work for anybody. I thought, well, okay, let's give it a try. And I was assigned to work for a draper whose name was Carrie Paulsgrove. And I was like her firsthand cutter type person. And um, I don't know how Barbara found out I could draw. So she had me do this beading pattern for Leontine Price. And it, it took me eight hours to draw it. And basically it was just a lot of swirls swirls and more swirls and she kept having me draw her beading patterns for her so that was so much fun that was like my favorite thing and she would decide what beads went where but I would I would it would they were just like line drawings really um, and then we'd mark it out on the fabric 
And at Matera's, you mark it out on the wrong side of the fabric. And then it gets put on a frame and the crochet beater then works from the wrong side with the beads underneath. And so she can't really see the beads. She can only see her hook. In the summer of, I believe Matera's closed around Christmas 2010. There, that's the summer before that. Um, Greg Barnes had asked me, he was doing Follies for the link for Kennedy Center. And he asked me, would I work with him on it? Of course, I mean, who would say no to that, right? And um, so we did one beading design that summer. And then it kind of, we, I didn't hear anything more about it. It didn't really go anywhere. And then uh, when the was closed just around Christmas, within two days, he contacted me and he said, let's get, let's get started. We can do a lot of stuff without, without a shop being involved. So he said, okay, we're going to do all these skirts, these big dirndl skirts. So we'll bead, we'll bead seven yards of fabric for each skirt. And so I did a beading design seven yards long. We got the fabric. And from there, I just never went back to a shop. A lot of the jobs I have are really small jobs. Like I did a beaded neckline and center front, a tiny little center front panel for Tracy Christensen for Sunset Boulevard when they redid that a year ago, two years ago. So a lot of them are little teeny jobs like that. I did a set of ballet beading for Mark Hoppel for New York City Ballet. But every, every once in a while, there's a big job. Uh, Aladdin was another Greg project, which was huge, absolutely huge. Yeah, that was an amazing show to start on. And again, we started before we had shops involved. So it was an amazing project, but I worked every day from May until October, mid-October, every day, 10 hours a day on it. It was so huge, really great. But I had to draw all the patterns. I had to buy all the beads. I had to make a key for everything and then make sure things got to where they had to go. Um, but it was huge, it was huge, but it was fabulous. And it was, it was fun, way fun. The job has been great. I love working with the designers. I'm not a sewing person. So um, in that respect, maybe I'm an odd fit for a costume shop because I didn't sew, but there's plenty to do that's not sewing. And I loved working with the designers. And um, because I have been there so long, got to work with some of the great names that aren't around anymore. But um, I love the designing part. I like the shopping and looking in the stores and seeing what's new. Yeah, I like all of it. I just, I love this work. That's all there is to it. If I didn't love it, I probably would be retired and gone by now. But, you know, it's, we're lucky if we're, if you're in a job for this long that you love. And I'm lucky. I consider myself very lucky. 